Welcome to the Andy Staples Show on site edition, Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm here with Ralph Russo, the Associated Press. This is actually this is a return date from a home and home series, <laughs> Ralph. We I was on your podcast uh, that you do through the AP a few weeks ago. We talked about the future of college football television. We are here at the place where the Big Ten, Pac-12, Big 12, American, Mountain West. And part of the MAC. And part I don't of, know if it's a full-blown MAC meeting, but the MAC, some of the MAC is here. Right, the Tuesday night crew of the MAC. <laughs> uh, we're here, and apparently some people listen to that and said we were right about some stuff. We're never right about anything, Ralph. Yeah, there was at least a little bit of like we were on to something. How about that? We, we were definitely okay, I on like to that. something. I like that. Yeah, we're definitely on to something as far as trying to program TV, college football TV, out past 2025 when all these conferences, including all the conferences mm -hmm. that are here this week. Now, they're not meeting together, but they're all here this week. These are the three conferences that will have TV deals coming up in the next yeah. four years. Big Ten is doing it basically – this year, right. like, the, like this summer will they'll be done by the end of the summer, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And so something significant has happened since we recorded that podcast. And that is a, a very, you know, newsworthy Netflix earnings call mm -hmm. where Netflix says, oh, we're going to have an ad supported tier. And when I saw that, I'm like, oh. Well, maybe they will get into live sports. So, that, that, like, means, if, that means a lot. I mean, some kind of programming yeah. that is appointment programming, not necessarily just something that you come to. Yeah. Because right? that's, uh, that's what that the, the, the whole point of Netflix, and it's interesting working for The Athletic, because I feel like one of the things that sells us at The Athletic is the lack of ads mm -hmm. when you're reading stories. And uh, at my old job, I, I would have, you know, sometimes upwards of 30 ads embedded into a story, and it drove people nuts mm -hmm. and but that's how we paid for stuff and you go to the athletic you pay a subscription fee you get no ads you get the story but netflix has been like that all the time and in fact i believe it, it, now i'll see the founders of the athletic later this week but i believe their initial thought was the netflix of sports writing right but and here that here, was the netflix model yeah here netflix netflix itself is saying you know what we're, we're looking at Hulu. We're looking at all these other streaming services where people are happy to watch some ads and pay a little bit less. And mm -hmm. maybe people don't want to pay the full freight because we keep raising their prices. And so I always assumed Netflix didn't get into this game. And then I, you know, prior to this year, I thought Apple probably is not getting into this game. But now you see Apple's got MLB. You got mm -hmm. Amazon with the NFL. And it sounds like the Big Ten has a chance to sell to, to somebody like that, along with Fox, ESPN, NBC, CBS. Yeah. So Netflix, the best description I, I remember having of them, and, and trust me, like their business model is not my expertise, but that they, they want to be they want to be something to everyone. Yes. They literally want everyone. <laughs> Their goal to is to have yeah. everyone to need Netflix. So, right. I, I mean, at this point, what are you looking for? Okay, now, how about sports fans? How about sports fans? Like, we don't really have anything to draw them in, but maybe having a little... I, can't, I think the one thing that I'll go back to, Andy, is what we talked about on the last podcast, on my podcast yeah. with you, again, the, the first of the home and home. Go listen to that one, by the way. Yes. Feel, Anywhere feel, you can feel, find feel podcasts. Seek that one out. AP Top 25 College Football Podcast. It was a couple of weeks back with Andy. Was this idea of at what level do those streaming services or, or online services does the amazons the 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 netflixes netflixes <laughs> the the um the apples right do they want to dabble in this because i don't think that the, certainly not the big 10 the big 10 is not at, at the point where it's going to say yes we'll give you all of our best yeah stuff. no they're not there yet that's not happening but maybe the Pac-12 or the Big 12 might be a little more willing to say, we'll give you a lot of our best mm -hmm. stuff. Maybe not all well, of it, and, and we'll you've give seen, you a lot of you, our you've best You've seen stuff. it with the Big 12 and with the American, where they've sold m more for ESPN+, Plus, right. forced ESPN to pay somewhat of a premium to put things on ESPN+, Plus because mm -hmm. they, they want to drive people there who will then turn over their hard-earned money mm -hmm. to subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. So it's it's that's where that money's coming. But if it's Apple, if it's Amazon, that's a different story because you may already have like there's a good chance you already have Amazon Prime mm -hmm. because you want two day free shipping. There's a good chance you already have the Apple streaming service because you love Ted Lasso or because you love right. uh, 
the Jason Momoa show where everybody's blind. My wife loves that show. I well, didn't like it. Well, and Netflix too. I, who doesn't have Netflix? Yeah. Now you can say who doesn't have Netflix, but apparently after the last earnings report, 200,000 yeah, fewer people. There's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. There's a lot of people who have either given it up yeah. or, or just, or, or they're too much password sharing. However yeah. you want to frame yeah. that, there are people out there who don't have Netflix that Netflix wants to reach. Um, but again, I, I keep going back to this idea of, do they want to dabble in this? Yeah. And is college football, listen, I know college football is a very, it's, it, it's, it's a powerful property. It's very valuable. But it's not but the it, NFL. It's not the NFL. And to a certain degree, it's also maybe not MLB. Oh, but I think it is. I think, I think in terms of just, if you look at raw viewers mm -hmm. for big games, mm -hmm. Then college football, it, the only thing it's it's behind is the NFL. Right. The NBA is the only other thing that really compares. That's like no, that's that's finals fair. games versus that is fair. Big you know playoff games that sort of thing. So 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 what can the so do those players shape or help shape the market here? I think that ultimately that's the right. Question. Is it is do it their driving mere, it up? Yeah. Do their mere presence help create? more opportune listen i mean to a certain degree this is larry scott's dream right a, i mean play, former play, pac 12 commissioner this is what he thought was going to happen right. if he got the pac 16 together yeah right i mean his 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 vision for the future was that the pac 12 is going to own all of its rights and then when all these streaming services jump in we will be best positioned mm -hmm. to sell them off now again it's it you know larry scott got a lot of criticism for the way these things played out but it would be somewhat ironic if on the back end of things with the next commissioner. I don't, I'm not saying the PAC 12 is all right. of a sudden going to like jump ahead of the sec. George Klyovkov did work at Hulu briefly. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I, I just do, do you think there, there is some irony to the idea that maybe the back, the PAC 12 does in some ways benefit from this it, surge it would, in its next round. It would be, it'd be crazy. And, and, but necessary, I think the PAC 12 and the big 12 need that the most. And, if you are the ones trying desperately to close the gap, mm -hmm. you're the ones who are, you're the leagues that are going to say, listen, we need to do something different here. Yeah. Like, how are we going to, how are we going to go from 30 to 40 million a piece to the 75 or 80 million yeah. a piece that we're, that and the they big, may not. The and and that's the part that I have to close. Yeah. I keep talking to people and they say, okay, yes, these companies have lots of money. Mm -hmm. But it's sort of like the I, I didn't get rich by being stupid thing. Like they they know what things are worth and they pay attention to the markets. Right. And so they may not overpay for, for this, but they may pay somewhat of a premium because it's an unfamiliar. So let's talk about because we talked about on your, this on your podcast where we were trying to kind of plot out the weekend, mm -hmm. basically, once all these new deals are in place. So you will have the, the new SEC deal with ESPN. Mm -hmm. where that 3.30 game on CBS will now be a 3.30 game on ABC or could potentially be an 8 p.m. game on ABC if or both, or if, both. If, that, if that's what they wanted to do. Uh, and then they'll have games on the SEC Network and games on ESPN and, and ESPN2. You'll have, I'm just going to go out and say, the, the best Big Ten game will be on Fox. Most and, likely at noon. And, and probably at noon. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're going to put that other other package i don't know if they're going to split it off into more than one other package it might be three that they split up and the part we talked about that i th i find very interesting so i believe i was in high school the last time espn did not have big 10 games or maybe i was in middle school gosh i would i i can't even remember i mean if you were in middle school that means i guess i was in college but i don't remember it's been it's been a long time and I think that that would be interesting, too, if, if they decide not to go with ESPN, which they have not, to my knowledge, decided that yet, that that's still very much on the table. But it says a lot about how we talk about college football, where our conversation comes from, because the, the prevailing wisdom as of five years ago was you have to have a package on ESPN or they will stop talking about you on their other shows and then your league's out of luck. But now. I don't, I haven't watched an episode of college football live in years, like game day, I guess, but I still, wa I watch Fox's pregame show. I get my college football conversation from social media. Mm -hmm. Like that's what generates the, the thought, you know, the different thoughts for me is, oh, I read th what this guy said or what this lady said on Twitter or on Instagram or, you know, it, it's not this, it's, it's not this monolith where 
Kirk Herbstreet has to say it or it didn't happen. Sure. And you're more bullish on this idea than I am, though. I, I agree to a certain degree, to a certain extent that uh, ESPN is not dri the driving force, the owner of college football, the way it has been in the past. Though it still wants to be. It still wants to be. And I still think that there I, I do suspect there is a certain amount of um, um, a conversation driven by ESPN because it is such a familiar platform mm -hmm. because more people listen. Big Noon has done a nice job of, of creating a niche, but a lot more people are watching game day. Yeah. Right. So that's still the 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 show of record. Right. In college football. You're right. As far as the Big Ten is concerned, they're going to talk about the Big Ten no matter what, because they have to talk about the Big Ten. It's a huge audience. You can't just yeah, ignore you, the audience. You can't ignore the Big Ten. But uh, so I don't know if the Big Ten necessarily needs Notre Dame for the expo. Excuse me. The big the Big Ten necessarily needs ESPN. ESPN yeah. For the exposure. I think that conversation is more interesting around the Big 12 and the Pac-12 because they're the ones that need to be that need to weigh exposure, money, mm -hmm. where like so in other words, if if Netflix is coming to me or Amazon is coming to me and saying, hey, we can definitely give you a little more if you're gonna squeeze out a Friday, we'll give you like a Friday night game mm -hmm. every Friday night. And we don't necessarily want your best game, but it needs to be like at least well, the top three. That would be that would be if I'm the Big Ten, that's what I'm pitching to Amazon or someone like that. Is we have games that originate from Evanston, from Champaign, from Piscataway. Those are our Friday night games. So when Ohio State goes to that place, that game's on Friday night. But the issue becomes, again, if you're Netflix, that to me, if you're Netflix or Amazon or Apple, that to me seems, again, like dabbling. So the question But that's becomes, what they, they've only dabbled so far. But the question becomes, do I would I rather have a more broad partnership mm -hmm. with the Big 12 or Pac-12, which I'm probably going to have to pay a little extra for because they, they're yeah, yeah. giving up for, they're giving up, exposure for the money but right? they're not and th okay this is this leads me to my next question because i'm curious about this because we're all in different stages technologically mm -hmm. of of how we consume things True. And, and probably the this is the biggest spectrum we've seen in our lifetimes of how people consume right. things differently because right, there are still there are still older older folks even myself who yeah. would want to sort of be on watching tv a right. tv and then it's, I can flip it's, around. it's cable or satellite because they don't want to buffer the sure yeah sure. but there's also a whole generation that i mean my, my daughter will watch a full day's worth of shows on her phone right never be near a television yes so that's the question do you think enough of our society and i don't even know if it's enough society maybe just enough of the the college football watching public mm -hmm. are they ready for a streaming only situation for a league i don't think so i i think that you would be short i think in the long term that could work out pretty well i do think you would be probably giving up some stuff short term mm -hmm. as far as your your legacy audience right now. yes uh and the other the other question I would have is how are they going to again sort of drive conversation for are you just going to become so like okay the, the, you're you're sort of we're going to slide you over here into this streaming service and only people who seek you out are going to find you as opposed to those when you're on like a, a, a linear network people sort of stumble across but, but, you and come to you in other words if you are on ESPN I might watch your game, not because I'm looking for your game, but just because, oh, I know college football will be on ESPN. Well, I, I do think that's interesting because when I did that study of the ratings, the the numbers of game for games on ESPN or on ESPN2 versus the numbers for games on FS1 mm -hmm. were, and, and I know a lot of it is that's just your condition to go to ESPN or your sports thing. bar is conditioned to put it on ESPN. See, I still think that's a thing. So that's when we talk about like, can you give up being on ESPN? I think there is a certain amount of, Hey, they drive conversation, but there's also a certain amount of like uh, user habit, mm -hmm. consumer habit yeah. that has been built up for a long period of yes, time. We're talking and, 35 years, yeah, basically. And yeah. To shift that and to make that battle, turn that battleship, and to think, oh, we'll, we'll get everybody. I mean, listen, 
somebody once thought that they were going to change the dynamic of, of New Year's Eve <laughs> by putting really big college football. Never, New I Year's can't Eve. imagine anybody doing that. How well did that work out? So I'm not saying you couldn't drive viewership and yeah, people will learn. I want to go see these games. I'm going to go to Amazon. If I really want these games. I'm going to go to Amazon, but you're going to lose a lot of casual viewers who come to you almost accidentally. Now the Amazon and Apple thing I think is interesting though, because it like, especially Amazon, because I feel like most people go, oh, I already have that. Mm -hmm. Or Netflix, same thing. I already have that. Mm -hmm. so that's where Peacock, Paramount Plus, HBO Max slash Discovery, whatever that's going to be called mm -hmm. when it when it's all merged together. Like that, that's one of those. I don't have that. Or I may have that. Oh, yeah. I, did we subscribe to that I, to watch I, Yellowstone or something? I already have it. Yeah. But am I instinctively flipping to it on a college football Saturday just to see what's on it? So there's that in there's a, there's a lot of education that'll have to go on if that's if that's the case. You know, there was something we didn't talk about during that last conversation. I, I think it's worth put, putting it up here because I, I ended up making a reference to it on Twitter. You know, TBS might be in this game, too. Well, yes. Uh, so what we were just talking about, HBO Max Discovery, yeah. that is Turner. That's right, that's TBS, right. TNT, all of that. And, and having that outlet because TNT is a place people go for live sports right. because of the NBA. And I could also see them doing it up you know what right. i'm saying like when I, when I say like okay we're gonna own we're gonna own the pac-12 per se mm. but we're gonna really give the pac-12 a great ride we're gonna do pac-12 today well, and I, we're gonna like, we're gonna make their well, game what is that big. if not what fox did with big noon saturday I, no, exactly. so i was talking to somebody from the big 10 not long ago and they were explaining that it was at these meetings a few years ago that the fox people presented their idea mm -hmm. for big noon saturday and I believe it was James Franklin, the Penn State coach, who said, OK, do that. But you got to brand it. You got to make it big. You got to make it special. Make people. And Quite literally big. It's exactly what they did. Yeah. They did it. And literally overnight changed the way. Right. Because now ESPN puts better games on at noon to compete with that. Yeah. And I think TBS, because of the nature of. You know, again, they're they're sort of trying to get in this game. So I think. Well, and that's your that's your legacy audience because and there's a legacy. You're audience. going there for Seinfeld reruns. You're going there for right. they still have Seinfeld reruns, right? Uh, I think most no? of the time. Friends. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure most of the time. Yeah. When, so I mean, that that's the thing that that you can still reach that audience and over the air is still important too. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah. whoever NBC and CBS mm -hmm. both in it for the Big Ten, whoever doesn't get them, they're going to need something. I don't think they just go with nothing. Yeah, I, I, especially CBS. Again, you built up consumer habit for so many years. Of, I'm going to go there. You've got the song. You've got the great production. You make a big event. That game is a big event, which is, again, if I'm the Big 12 and the Pac-12, I want somebody to make my games a big event. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want somebody who's going Here, to sort of do it up and, for and my games. I'll be honest. If I'm the network dealing with these people, and I've seen how they've operated in the, in, I'm going to the big 12 before I go to the Pac 12, because if I go to the Pac 12, I'm only going to get a complaints about what time the game start. I mean, there is that the big 12 people. And I realize the big 12 people complain about 11 AM local kickoffs too. But I think if it, Oh, you think if it's Oklahoma, if, Oklahoma, Oklahoma yeah, but they're, last they're year? going somewhere else <laughs> that they're going to get those on ESPN at Oklahoma too, by the way, right. when they're in the sec, get, get used to that. But I think they're more malleable. I think I, I think they're they would be more understanding of the business aspects of it and be like, look, okay, cool, we'll we'll take it. It, it feels to me like the Pac-12 fans want the games to start at 1 p.m. Pacific every single time and never want it to be anything different. Well, and that's a place where, again, I think if you're looking for the streaming services, maybe they're the place where they can get some accommodation. You could actually do that for yeah. that, where they would be like, yeah, sure, like we'll we'll accommodate you on those times. And listen, as long as the, the, you get us X number of subscribers, we don't well, care. Well, uh, listen, yeah. man, this is all push and pull when it comes to money, right? Yeah. We give you some game control time. We get l more money. We want, yeah. no, we need more game control time back. Yeah. So we're going to give up a little money. So what, what is the sweet spot? Yeah. And like the big 12, I've been saying this and I've said this a couple of times on this podcast, the new big 12 needs to try to own Friday night. Now, whether that's on ESPN or whether that's on a broadcast network, uh, probably not. So Fox has SmackDown on Friday night, so that's probably not not available. But mm -hmm. let's say NBC wanted to do that or somebody like that. Friday night's a graveyard for scripted television. Mm -hmm. So, but but you can if if you got a good game, people will watch it. So I do think 
the the new Big Twelve should think about that. Now, obviously, a lot of schools in the state of Texas, high school football is big there. Maybe you don't want to do that, but I will say the ones coming from the American. Mm-hmm. Houston's already been doing home games on Friday nights. Right. Uh, Cincinnati, obviously, huge. No, it's in Ohio, but still huge high school football area. UCF, huge high school football area, but they've been doing games on Friday yeah. nights. Already schools that are yeah. used to doing this because this is what they did in the AAC. Yeah, and so if you if you don't want, like let's say Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, uh, TCU, the, the schools that, that are in big high school football country do not want to do that, fine. Do it when they're on the road. And you know what? I, mean, I remember back in the day when occasionally SEC games were played on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. But who played them? South Carolina? Vanderbilt. Mississippi State. Mississippi, and Jackie, I, I covered those yep. teams. J- Jackie Sherrill liked those because he because mm-hmm. they understood it as, <laughs> hey, this is our night. This yep. is like We're not going to be. Steve Spurrier took his team to Starkville on a Thursday night, and Florida refused to ever play another Thursday night game. Yeah, so, so, so I think it, you say, well, the Texas schools might not want to be involved in it, but I don't know. Maybe if I'm Baylor, maybe I don't mind occasionally yep. but being on a I, Friday night. Yeah, I'm thinking own, own it. Yeah. Become the – because. My thing about the new Big 12, and I've said this a few times, they're going to be so close competitively, yeah. those teams. It's going to be fun. What you think is going to be the best game of the weekend may not be. It may be the one that's two, three, or four on the right. docket. And so you do a double header. Like you've got Cincinnati at UCF, or, or let's say, okay, we'll, we'll go mixing, mixing, matching the new and the old. Oklahoma State at UCF at 730. Mm-hmm. Texas Tech at BYU at 1030. That's a hell of a double header. That's a potential to or be seven and ten, or however right, you want to do right. it. You're selling yeah. comp- you're selling really good games and really good competition. We may not have the bell cows, but we are going to have a lot of very good football. And, games, and the thing is, if you have great games, games that sort of captivate, because I'm I know I'm a sicko, you're a sicko. The people listening, you're all sickos, yeah. and we we love if you you're for listening it. To this, but yeah. but I do think, especially with the 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 gambling becoming more permissive and, and more states legalizing it, more in-game wagering, that sort of thing. If there's a great competitive fun game on a Friday night, people are going to come find it. Yeah, listen, it helps. I mean, this I'll give the AP poll a pop. It helps to have a number in front of your team. Yeah. And the Big 12 should be able to, like, again, I don't know if you're going to have a whole bunch of ones, twos, and threes in front yeah. of your teams, but you might have a whole bunch of 9, 10, 12, 16, 19, 21. So, yeah. And if you're matching up those type of games where you have four or five ranked teams, even if they're not like the highest ranked teams, I think there's something there. I think that's what they're, that's, that will be the selling point for the big. Players. So Ralph, we won't get into, and, and this is, this has been a, a, a complaint free zone because we, we have a lot of changes in the sport to talk about that, that everybody's, you know, very up in arms about, and you're going to, we're going to deal with a lot of that on the show over the next few weeks, but, I don't know what things will look like in 2040 in terms of 2040. what teams will be where and who. Well, let's 2028. say 2036 when the ACC sure. contract ends. Sure. Do you think we will click on our smart TV mm-hmm. and go to a streaming service and watch all of our college football that way at that point? By 2036. You know, people who are smarter than me on this believe it to be so. So I, I think that it is likely that we will have to. I think it goes like in, in opposite directions, mm-hmm. either over the air or streaming service. So you think that there won't be a blend? It will move to either. I one think or linear the other? cable will be gone mm-hmm. and it will be over the air, which oh, I see what you're saying. which you can you can then subscribe to that particular network streaming so like ABC will be available through the through the Disney streaming service like Disney Plus will be. ABC, Disney, Mm -hmm. everything ESPN does, not ESPN Plus, but the whole offering, it will cost like 30 bucks a month and people will buy it. Yeah, I've I've operated under the assumption that we are moving towards you will have to pay for your sports. Yes. It, just whatever it is, you will have to pay for to be a sports fan to watch your sports. Now, yeah, might, we had a nice ride for a little while with a bunch of people yeah. who didn't care about sports paying for it. Yeah, yeah, but so. I, I think that we that like will it be 2036? Maybe that, I yeah. mean, that's, you know, that's four, that's 14 years from now. That sounds, like but yeah, if you don't want to do rabbit ears, you can do Paramount plus Peacock, ABC or Disney. But plus. I'm not even sure yeah. about that. I think it, I think you might get to a model where it's, it's deemed affordable. I don't know what affordable yeah. would be in 2036. That might be $7,000. Might be <laughs> depending on the way things are going now. It might be. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but but I, I do get to I, I think that we'll it will we will have been we will have been taught and conditioned yep. that what you want you have to pay for over I whatever. do think the cable bundle will get reinvented in some way, shape or form. Yeah, that's possible. Where where there's this pa- there will be packages you can buy we're certain, you know, there will be un, unholy alliances between. Well, but different- this, this goes back to something that we've talked about before. Well, at that point, what will college football right look like? Mm-hmm. Who will be where? Completely and will, different. Yeah. And will they be doing what I've always thought that they would do, which is here is the college football network. And maybe true. Whether, Why not just sell it direct to the consumer? Yeah. yeah. Whether these conferences are all linked in arms, but still somewhat separate entities, or maybe there is as a super league and there's six. I don't know what exactly that looks like, but I've always thought that eventually what you're getting back to is sort of like retro, right? Like we're going to, we're going to go back, back to the future and yeah. have the CFA. <laughs> except, uh, except unlike the, the NCAA contract or the CFA, right. there would be no limits on how many times right. A, right. a team can appear and you won't, you won't get Appalachian state Samford when, when you really, really want but, but, NC state and, and, and pit yeah <laughs> so. but the fact of the matter is i mean i think that that's the that's the future model here because i just see consolidation and the idea that like that's where you could make a lot of money if yep. you're creating a product where this is where you come to get your college football and we're all going to sort of like whoever we is at yeah. that time you know your school might not be we i don't know who you are out there watching but <laughs> i don't know if you're going to be one of the we's or one of the outs but We'll find out in, in 12 years. Well, I, I'm going to make you the, the president of that network, the college football network. I like that. that it could be a what are, what are we charging for that? Seven thousand. I know. But, but, but 20 bucks. OK. I, let's, let's, just, let's pretend that was a, a thing you could get now, because yeah. conceivably you actually if you got rid of the existing media rights deals, you could do that. What do you think would be the price point if you could say you could have every FBS wow. game? See, I think it would be a lot. Is it a, is it 150 bucks a year? Yeah. My mind went to a hundred, a hundred. Okay. My mind immediately went to, that's a lot of like, when you add up how many people watch college football, that is a lot of money. Right. I'm bad at math. As, as you know, we're a terrible math podcast, Yeah, yeah. but that's why I'm a good guest. That's a lot of money. I I do not swing the (laughs) curve. I do not, I do not alter the curve. I believe, I believe the scientific term for that would be a buttload of money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause I think it's super valuable. I mean, just think about, and then you can sell ads on against it because you it's a right. live broadcast and you have right, advertising. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that would be an incredibly valuable product. And again, I always have thought that like if the, now, of course, the stumbling block to that is these conferences compete against each other. And no, 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 I don't want to be your partner. And cheer. I, I'm because I want to I want to dominate you because yes. it goes down to what could, could think about what like if you really want to open the door. To Ralph, this. if only they had some incentive to want to work together. If you really think about an open the door to this, the immediate the immediate obvious reason why this doesn't happen is because you 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 quickly get to the uh, get to the conversation of but but we're worth more than you. Yes. As, us, as, why should us, we float you? Yeah. Us SC teams, we're worth more than you. And and that conversation has been had in sports before. Yeah. You know, we the Yankees are worth more than you, the Pirates. Yeah. We we the Cowboys are worth more than you, the Browns. And listen again, dear viewer, yeah. coming to your town at some point will be. Hey Vanderbilt, we're worth more than you, and that'll be Alabama saying that. Yeah, like those conversations within these conferences, that's coming. Oh, that's, Ralph, that's coming. I said this was going to be a complaint-free podcast. Oh, sorry about that, but that's all right. That <laughs> we'll leave you with that that notion, though. The idea of would you just click a button? Would you Apple Pay it? Would you Google Pay it? Well, flat rate to get every college football game delivered to all your devices. That sounds pretty awesome to me. Sounds good to me. They're going to have to figure this out. So it is uh, currently 2022. The ACC contract runs out in in 14 years. So they got some time. Till then, we'll be here in lovely Arizona. We'll talk to you later.